my name is Maven Eller Five, and I'm a practitioner at Mystic Elements in Wilmington, North Carolina. And today I'd like to cover a topic of scrying in crystal balls. Crystal ball gazing is a very old form of divination. You see that same ideology in scrying mirrors and scrying in pools of water, bowls of water under the moon. And I, today I have Brandy with me. Brandy also works here at Mystic Elements, we're lucky. Recently, in my workshop, Magical Circles, Walking the Old Path, we covered the topic of crystal balls. And I had such an outpouring of response from that, that we've added some more crystal balls to our stock here in the store. And today I'd like to cover that just a little bit. So I'm gonna give BK, who wanted to be there and loves crystal balls, a bit of information to begin to build on her own crystal ball experience. So one of the things for myself, when you are going to read someone's, uh, read a crystal ball for yourself or someone else's, um, or for someone else, you, you want kind of want to drop the lights in the room. I like to use candles because they give different refractions in the balls. You don't have to, but this is my technique. I've been re reading crystal balls since probably, I was in my early 30s, and it's just one of my favorite forms of divination. Now, as you look, I want you just, all of you out there watching this, to take a moment and really look at the crystals in front of you. You will see, you should be able to see as you move different little, um, what look like little lines in the crystal balls, or you know maybe you see an image, and that's what's supposed to happen. Sometimes, Brandy, when you start to read them, you want to take your eyes and kind of let your eyes get a little tired, you know, like they're a little, like half open. Kind of let yourself ease in and kind of now focus on a ball. Find one or two that you know you already see some imagery with and kind of gaze into them. And we're gonna just hold our focus for a moment. And I want all of you out there to do the same thing. It's just to take a moment and look in the balls. And maybe you see reflections in the room. A crystal ball will refract and turn an image. That doesn't mean it isn't something for you to gaze upon. They are also called gazing balls, just so you know. And the idea here is to allow an image to bubble up. That's why I like it to even be darker sometimes. I like a dark room. Um, I read in a dark room, so. You want to take even your points. You see, I moved the crystal point out to the end there. You want to take your points and just let your eye rest. Let the lights flicker. Let images begin to flow if you see a horizon. In this one here, I don't think that you guys can see it, but there is a horizon that is made from the color of the cloth on the table. And the candle flickering seems to be under it. And that is pulling me forward where the candles are moving. I am seeing people. Um, in this other image over here, it's very, in this bigger crystal ball that you see at the top here, there is a lot of stuff going on in that ball. And it's, um, I think that we could spend a good 10, 15 minutes just gazing into this ball. When you light crystal balls together, or when you light up lights around crystal balls like this, you'll see lots of things. Most people reading a crystal ball will have one in front of them. And while I've shown you clear crystal balls, some of these are glass and some of them are true crystal, while I have these all on the table, it's also possible to work with colored crystals. Um, you can use black or purple or different mediums of stone or gems that you like. We have one over here that I don't know about Brandy, but it's the one talking the most. It is, it has a lot of imagery swirling around and it's almost like it's showing you that there's two sides to everything. When you gaze or divine anything, a great deal of this is intuition and, and, and your own skill sets manifesting. So as I look into this ball, I notice the light around it, but what my spirit tells me, or what I hear where my source of intuition comes from, says that the thing I need to do is keep things in balance. That what I would share with you, um, dear viewer, if you were here, and I will share with Brandy, I feel like this one's talking to us that there, 
balance is a very risky business sometimes that it's hard to keep balance. Sometimes you lean one way and things get overwhelming. So finding your balance and staying center is always key. So I'm going to turn to Brandy now and put her a little bit on the spot. Brandy, what do you, do any of these speak to you? Are you seeing, what do you see? Yes, actually in this one I see um, a completely inverted version of this one, which gives me the indecision or hangman or paradox feeling. Um, and I can see it in this one too. And that probably is placement, but that's how I'm feeling. Also the hues, I'm seeing more color mm -hmm. than anything. Would you say there's something to see in color in these? There is. There is something to see in color. I'm sure that's a refraction. Mm -hmm. And yet while my mind knows that, the part of me that holds a magical or um, divinatory skill set sees that within all of them there is every one of them has a little something different going on inside <laughs> of it and it's very intriguing yeah truly so as you practice if you get a crystal ball and you want to learn how to do this my best advice to you is get a ball um, Put it in front of you and begin to work with it as it calls you to it. You know, I even if you sit down and you're not feeling it, it's still important to become familiar with it, to work with it, to mingle, commingle the energies. And I recommend you take it out, especially on new moons and full moons, and really build that skill set. Get to know the gazing ball. And as you, just as an example, as you sit there, and you're looking at the ball, you might even take a few deep breaths and cleanse inside and out. Just let that out. Let it all out and relax your mind. Soften your thoughts and allow your mind to kind of go blank. This sometimes is very important before divination. You want to allow a free surface, a, a clarity or lack thereof, either however you want to look at it. But I find I become more sharpened when I relax all the other things going on in my mind. And then allow yourself just to gaze. And don't, don't doubt yourself so much. You're going to need a little time to start to understand and see what you're seeing. And each of us have our own divination skills. Our brains are all wired independently. We are all little individual miracles and universes within ourselves. And once you accept that you are a divine being, this becomes easier. Also feel free to move things around the table, just like someone who throws bones or, or uses other divination things. It's also all right for you to take special thing items and place them among, you know, what you have out. If you have special stones you love, lay them out. If you have pictures of loved ones, or let's say they bring in someone's coming to see you and you want to try to read for them, you're practicing your skills. You can lay pictures of loved ones down. You can lay, let, let's say they want to know about their dear aunt, you know, Martha, who's been gone. And they bring a picture, lay the picture down. These things have a way of turning and swirling within the balls and uh, within inside the crystal and all the infractions. And it's just surprising what will come up. My greatest story about crystal ball reading is I do not have my personal ball here today, but... I was sort of reading for someone in the 90s now, let's go back there a ways, and while I was reading, the eye of a serpent, maybe, for me I thought it was a dragon, and it came up to the ball, I could see it coming from far away, and it came up to the ball, and it brought its eye up, and it got closer and closer, and it looked around the room, and then it looked me dead in the eye and the person that I was trying to read for. We evacuated the room rather rapidly, but um, since then that ball's been very active and I know that things can come through. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I've also seen headstones and I've seen roses. So, um, and on any other number of things, but those things kind of stand out to me for the way they filled the ball, as if they came up into its energy and presented themselves. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing um, divination tool that has um, not fallen out of favor per se, but many people 
I have set it aside for tarot, affirmation cards, and other things. So if you are interested in reading crystal balls or crystal gazing, um, I suggest you pick up a ball or find something with it you, you currently personally possess and get it out and start working with it. It's a, it's a skill that is just really needs to come back. It's a beautiful, it's wonderful at night with candles lit and the lights drop down. And it's just an incredible skill set to develop. You can use this skill set in so many other skills of divination you might be trying to learn. So I wish you the very best. I'm, I'm here and I'm available at Mystic Elements if you'd like to come in and talk about buying a crystal ball or how to work with yours. And we will be offering this class in the store sometime soon. And we'd love to have you. So from all of us at Mystic Elements, have a great day.